How to correct or fill out your W-4 form 2020 using a tax withholding estimate on the IRS website for a person who is married, filing separately, and in this case, they have children. We're going to give them two children. Hello, you got Mr. And Mrs. Smith. Smith. And in this brief video, we want to make it simple and plain on how a person who's married, filing separately with children can fill out this W-4 based on their scenario. And before we get started, let's talk about what you need before you even get started. Right here it says, before you begin, gather the most recent pay statements for yourself and if you are married for your spouse as well. Gather information for other sources of income you may have. Have your most recent income tax return handy. In this scenario, this person won't need that, but it's certain detailed ones that require that. But they're just letting you know what to expect and use whole dollar amounts in the estimator, not decimals, just whole dollar amounts. That's how it works. So when you go to the IRS website, this is how you locate it. If you can see this domain up here, this is what you can type in to access this and basically just click, use the tax withholding estimator, and it'll take you to the About You section. So this part is all about you, and if you remember, then you know exactly what we'll fill in this section. All right. So it says, what filing status will you use for your tax return? So again, we're going to do married filing separately. Can someone else claim you as a dependent on their return? No. Dependent. Do you plan to claim dependents on your tax return? Yes. How many dependents do you anticipate claiming? Two. Do you or will you hold a job this year with paychecks from which federal income tax is regularly withheld? Yes. How many jobs do you expect to hold this year? One. Pension. Will you receive income from a pension this year? No. And number five, of course the government wants to know if you have other sources of income and tax payments coming in, Social Security, scholarships, unemployment. We're going to leave all of those blank. And the demographics, we will not be 65 or older on January 1st and it's not blind. Part two, income and withholding. And your income and withholding for each job and or pension, you will earn income from this year. Each job should be entered separately. The order in which you enter them does not matter. The estimator does not support decimals, so round all numbers to the nearest dollar, as we stated. So they want to know about your job. Do you expect to hold this job the entire year, January 1st through December the 31st? As I always stated, nobody's expecting to get fired, so we're going to put yes. How frequently are you paid? This person is paid every two weeks. Keep in mind, every two weeks is different from twice monthly. An example of every two weeks is every other Friday. An example of twice a month is the first and the 15th of the month. Know the difference. On what date did your most recent pay period end? So this thing is up to date. It knows exactly what today is. And right here is showing that we're on Wednesday, February 19th at the time of this recording. However, the last payment ended or the pay period ended on the previous Friday, which is February the 14th. So they got paid on V-Day. If they were celebrating with their with their boo, their significant other, then they got paid on the exact same day. Enter the total wages you expect to receive this year. We're going to say they expect to receive 45000 That's our favorite number that we like to roll with for this example. Enter any bonuses. We're not going to put in any bonuses, but basically just understand that any additional money that you get, the IRS wants to know about it. So they can tax it. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. Using your last pay statement, keep in mind, you want to have that pay statement in front of you. Using your last pay statement into the total federal income tax withheld. Now, you don't have to guess on this. This is going to be on there. You want to look for the year to date. So the year to date amount that the person has already had taken out is 1728 They get taxed every two weeks. So year to date, meaning all the way up to this point, this is their amount. So whatever yours say is, as long as it's the most recent, because remember, you have to be accurate. As long as it's the most recent pay stub, you want to put that in, not guessing, winging it, figuring it out. Put what's already on the check stub. Now, what was the amount withheld from your last check? 432 because that's a, the amount that they're being taxed every time they get paid every two weeks. Did you or will you contribute to a tax-deferred retirement plan such as a 401k? We're going to put no here. We're just going to keep it simple. But if this scenario fits you, then by all means, 
put yes and then you know you'll have to fill it out accordingly and keep in mind every line has a question mark and when you click that question mark it elaborates on what the question is about so if it's something you're unsure of you hit that question mark and it'll usually let you know if you're participating your check stub will also let you know it'll show if you're contributing to the 401k and other things as well as well as this next question did you or will you contribute to an HSA FSA pre-tax child care credit account or other cafeteria plan push the question mark if you're not familiar in this example we're gonna put no and then we're just gonna hit next adjustments to income do you want to go to the next step without including adjustments or would you like to see possible adjustments and let me read right above that it says most taxpayers don't have a large enough adjustment to have a significant impact on their tax obligation so this is what we're gonna do we're just gonna see the adjustments. Let's look at them to see if there's anything that we may qualify for that we didn't know, like student loan entrance, uh, educator expense, deduction from contributions to an IRA outside of deductions included in the payroll, health savings, moving expenses, alimony, penalties for early withdrawal, uh, certain business credits. And so for this one, we're going to leave all of these blank and we're just going to go to the next yeah. Deductions from income. You qualify for a standard deduction of twelve thousand four hundred. Deductions reduce the amount of your income subject to income tax. Most taxpayers take the standard deduction. Would you like to take the standard deduction or itemize your deduction? Now, many people prefer to try to say that they itemize versus going for a standard deduction, but this is what you got to understand. If your itemizations or the itemizations that you think you're claiming does not outweigh the standard deduction, then it doesn't make sense to itemize. You want to go with a higher amount because this is equivalent to you paying less in taxes. So if your number in this example is not more than 12400 then go with the standard deduction, which is why most taxpayers go with the standard deduction because it benefits them the most. I know many people think that because they contribute to their tithes and offerings or they do charitable donations and they tell the taxpayer that these are the things that I contribute. The tax preparer should not include it if it's not more than the standard deduction. So just keep that in mind. It's not benefiting you if it's not more than whatever the standard deduction is. So we're not going to take the stand. I mean, the itemization. We're going to click on standard deduction and hit next. I just wanted to kind of enlighten you just so you'll understand it. Tax credits. Let's talk about it. All right. Based on your in inputs, you qualify for tax credits for your dependents. Tax credits are amounts you subtract directly from your tax obligation. Do you want to learn more? or finish and get your results without tax credits. Let's go ahead and see the tax credit. So the very first one is child and dependent care related. So they already told you that you qualify. So enter the number of qualifying children under 17. We're gonna put two. Then it says child and dependent care tax credit. And hit that little question mark for me. It says you may be able to claim the child dependent care if you paid expenses for the care of a qualifying individual to enable you and your spouse to file a joint return to work or actively look for work. So this is like daycare expenses. The two children that we have, we're not going to put in any child care expenses. So we're going to leave this one blank. And then the next one, enter an estimate of your work-related child independent care expenses. We're going to leave that one blank as well. But next, we have the earned income tax credit. Select the number of qualifying children we're going to put to. If you don't know if you qualify for the earned income tax credit, click on that question mark. But a lot of people typically know if they qualify for the earned income tax credit because it is based on your income. Then the last one is adoption tax credit. Well, the kids in this scenario are not adopted, so we're going to leave that blank. Now, some other tax credits that you could qualify for, foreign tax credit, educational, retirement savings, homeowner, elderly or disabled, business, alternative minimal tax, and energy efficient vehicles. We're going to leave all of those blank and hit next. 
and boom, there go your results. So this is the power of this 2020 W4, the tax withholding estimator, is that it lets you know what to expect. The more sincere and accurate you are with your input, the more accurate they are with the output. So it's important for you to have the things that we say in front of you so you can be accurate and you know what to expect. Many people used to shy away from filling out the W-4 because they were terrified of having to, oh, terrified of not knowing what to expect. The fear of the unknown was kicking in heavily. Well, the IRS really catered to everyone to let people know that if what you put in is accurate, this it's pretty much what you can expect. And as you can see the results, if you scroll down, it has everything. All of the things you put, make sure everything is in alignment with your exact scenario. Print this bad boy out, and now you have it for your own records. But the power in it is that it educates you on what's going on. So right here it says, if you do not change your withholding, if you keep everything as it is, you are likely to get a refund. Expected tax withholding. 11232 Anticipated tax obligation, $0. Estimated overpayment, 11232 So you're getting back the exact expected tax withholding based on your situation. You're married, you're filing separately, but it's almost treating it like you're single, but you have, you have two kids, and based on your income, you qualify for the tax credit, as they stated, which means that you will get a refund. So this is what we like. They ask you. They're not saying it or assuming that you have to accept this as law. They say, are you happy with your results? Then you don't need to do anything. If you're happy with getting the 11232 in the form of a refund, you don't need to do anything. But if you want to adjust your results, now we can alter the changes by using this handy-dandy slider. Talk to the people. All right, y'all. So listen, the government is now giving you options, which is what we like to do. We like to give you options. Typically... And, and I can't lie, a couple years ago, if if you would have came to us and said, I'm getting an $11,000 refund, we would have said, why in the world are you waiting to the beginning of the year to get an $11,000 refund when you could have been getting that throughout the year, and that could have helped you tremendously? See, especially if you're the type of person, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, if you're barely, you know, making minimum payments on your bills, if you're always falling behind, if your lack of money is costing you money, if you're getting hit with reconnection fees and disconnection fees and all of that, late payments, then it would make sense for you to get the bulk of your money throughout the year. And that's what we used to preach and teach. However, now we're not telling you what to do. We just want you to be smart. And with this adjuster tool, you can do both. You can decide if you want a portion of your money throughout the year or if you want a portion of it at the end of the year. Or again, you can do both. All you have to do is just slide this tool. Let's say you decide, you know what? Give me 5000 of that throughout the year, and then I can get a refund, you know, of about 5500 plus at the end of the year. So we're kind of trying to split that down the middle. Well, guess what? You can do that, and it even shows you exactly what you need to do to your W-4 form in order to make that possible. Now you're getting a refund, and you've given yourself a pay raise throughout the year, and every single time you get paid, you can put some money aside. You can establish your emergency fund. You can start paying off debt. You can start collecting your down payment for that home. You can start investing. The possibilities are endless. You can really come up off of this tax refund. And if you need help, we're more than happy to help you, to guide you, to let you know what we did, how we were able to completely turn our financial situation around, okay? We have a platform that's very, very inexpensive that can benefit you greatly. But it's just all about being smart, you guys, making smart decisions with your money, with your refund, and using it to get ahead. See, once you do this slider, it lets you know, okay, this is going to be your refund, 5500 and these are the things that are going to take place, and what can you do to maximize that opportunity? So it adjusts it instantly. For a refund of approximately 5500 your job is, pay, you, you know, you expect to get 45000 It said to get your desired refund amount, you will need $159 withheld from your paycheck, $273 less than your current tax withholding. So what that means is you'll be getting an extra $273 per paycheck. So if you're getting paid every two weeks, that's about $550, give or take, 
that you'll be getting back in the form of extra money every paycheck. So the question is, what can you do with the extra 273 or 500 plus every time you get paid? Like she stated, you can use that to pay off debt. You can start investing. You can build up your emergency fund. You can pay down debt, save on some interest. If you like to look at it from that angle, you can invest in your business. If you're a business owner on the side, it's a lot of things that you can do. And you can still expect to get a $5,500 refund at the end of the year because that's what you chose to do. And if this is your selection, then you can hit download pre filled out W4 form. Now you're able to turn this into your HR department at your job, and you're able to have it filled out based on what you want to happen. And the IRS makes it that seamless. It's automatically filled out. You can also learn how to go about it, but we recommend just using the, the preloaded W-4, turning it in. However, you may be like in the mindset of what we used to say. Instead of getting a refund at the end of the year, get it throughout the year, do more things with it throughout the year. So this 11000 instead of you waiting to the end of the year, go ahead and get it throughout the year if that's something you choose. If that's what you choose, you take that slide all the way down to zero. Basically what this says is I don't want to get a refund, but I don't want to owe you anything at the end of the year. Right. So a lot of people, they were shying away from this. They wanted to get a decent amount throughout the year. They just wanted to know if if I just this W-4, am I going to owe? That's the only thing they wanted to know. Well, this puts you at a zero. If you don't owe them, they don't owe you. It says to get your desired refund amount, you will need $0 withheld from each paycheck, $432 less than your current tax withholding. So what that means is this. The amount of money that's currently being withheld at $432 that we stated, that will start being shown in your paycheck. So what can you do with an extra $432 per check, which is an extra $864 per month every, you know, for two paychecks? Now you're able to take that and figure out, okay, can I pay down some debt? Can I pay down my home? Can I pay off a credit card? Can I save? Can I invest and grow that money? So now that $11,000 that would have been coming in the refund is coming throughout the year, and you're able to make a come up, and you're not missing the refund when it comes time next year because you've done strategic things throughout the year. Our platform teaches you exactly how to go about it, how to make things happen, like the Queen was stating. We just want to let you know that the W-4 can be used to build wealth if you let it and you have options on making that happen. So the choice is yours. You can keep it how it is. You can adjust it halfway so you can get a portion at the end of the year, but do a, a portion of things throughout the year. Or you can break even with the IRS, and now you're able to do even more things throughout the year. That's all I got. You got anything else you want to answer that, Queen? All I got. This is for the person who is married, filing separately, two kids, and the options that come along with it. Stay tuned to anything else that we have going on. Put in the comments if you have any scenarios. Share this with somebody who you know is married and loves to file separate because many people we run into, they're like, yeah, we, we like to file separately because of this. Share this with somebody who you feel may benefit. This was a request that we wanted to fulfill, so hopefully you got value, and whomever you share this with gets value as well. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Signing out. Out.